Hello, I'm Alan, and I'm so happy that you're here. I want to share with you today one of the most important ingredients to being used of God. I think it's lacking in many believers, many leaders I feel are lacking, this one most important ingredient. And if you get this in your heart and in your life and live it, I believe that God will promote you and bring you forward into your calling. And so many believers are striving hungry to be used of God. I used to be one of them. So hungry. God, use me. God, let me be part of the kingdom of God. Let me participate. And I look for testimonies and try to do things to be used of God. All of it was good-hearted and, and good in God's eyes. And I was always wanting God to, to include me with things. And when you look at your calling, whatever it might be, when you look forward into the future and see your calling, you begin to wonder, well, how am I going to get there? How is it going to happen? And that's where I think you and I have to come to a, a place, a, a crossroads, a position to where we decide who's in charge of our future, God or me? Am I going to let God lead me uh, and allow, allow Him to lead me wherever He thinks I need to go and trust that when I follow Him, He will bring me into my calling? Or am I led by opportunity and, and, and seeking uh, connections and friendships and, and opportunities to move forward in the name of God? And that's a really big difference there. And, and the one, to trust God uh, to lead you into your future means you really have to let go of the power, the, the drive in you to make things happen. I think that in my life, when I was ambitious that way, it wasn't really out of pride as much as it was out of fear that God may not pick me because I was unworthy. And, and hence, when you start to follow God, it's so important that you follow Him because he, he led me down paths that were the opposite direction of my calling and places of, of serving, places of doing things that no one recognizes as important to help me face my insecurities first, to face my pride, to face my uh, fear of unworthiness first before he began to promote me in my calling. So as I talk to you today, we all want to be used of God. We all want to be included in the kingdom of God. And if you're called to, to a, a pulpit ministry, uh, this is even more important for you to understand the most important ingredient is to have the heart of a servant. And I say that because I believe that no matter what we do in the kingdom of God, whether it's sweeping the floor, giving money to a ministry, uh, feeding the poor, or preaching or prophesying, it's all serving people in the name of God. And I remember the Lord taught me that one, one time. Uh, when I was fairly young, I was just starting off in ministry. I was part of a group at the church, kind of a, a church group that uh, of interns of, of a Bible school in our local church. And uh, one of the, the leaders asked us to uh, do the dishes one day for the women's uh, banquet. The church would host a, a, a big women's banquet every year. And they asked us, the, the, the people in the Bible school, the young guys and girls, to, um, to do the dishes for the ladies. And you know, if you've been to a ladies' uh, banquet, it's a lot different than a man's banquet. A man's banquet, uh, you use paper plates and, and styrofoam cups and, and bad coffee, and you're good. But for ladies, there's like many plates, many forks and spoons and dishes, and it's fancied up. And so it was going to be a long night of doing dishes in the church building at the end of the ladies uh, eating their food. So many of us signed up in zeal to participate. But then that night, one of the Bible call students hosted their birthday party because it fell on that night and hosted their birthday party and took most of the helpers. Well, I showed up because I had signed up to do it. And another man showed up who I love. His name was Paul, um, Paul showed up, and, and he was a little older than I, than I am, and I always respected him. Uh, and we did the dishes that night, the two of us. 
we did all the dishes they were piling up and and we made we just made light of it and made it our model they said today the dishes tomorrow the world that was our model today the dishes tomorrow the, the world and one of the pastors came in and she said you know today you guys have qualified yourself for ministry and everyone who left and and abandoned the work they have disqualified themselves for ministry and there's a principle in the kingdom of God that's so important that you and I understand is that if you're faithful in the little God will trust you with the more but if you're unfaithful in what is little then he won't trust you with the more and so these little things these little things that we face the little the little projects that no one notices they're really so important to to have the heart of a servant matthew chapter 23 verse 11 and 12 i'll use as our core verses today but he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. And this is the principle I want to reinforce in your heart today. Now, now we as preachers, we can tell people what to do by the Bible. And, and people will try to do that. But when you're praying in tongues and seeking God, the Holy Spirit will help you to become this. So as I preach this, I'm not trying to give you a list of things to do. I'm trying to encourage you that when you come across this by the Holy Spirit, uh, you're not going crazy. You're not wrong <laughs> because he taught me the same thing and many others. And see, this is the humbling where I refuse to make a way for myself. It's like when you take a, a bunch of young guys, say you have uh, 10 young men and you buy a large pizza. And, and everyone grabs a slice, and everything's fine until one guy grabs two slices. Then everyone else tries to grab their second slice because they don't want someone eating more than them. And there's a, there's a part of life that's so important that you are at peace with not making a way for yourself, even when others are, look like they are, they are making it work. My dad, when I was a young, young, kid our first time fishing on the boat uh, he pulled out a chocolate bar and he broke it in half and one size was one side was bigger than the other now at this time my dad wasn't saved uh, at all but he gave me the best advice of life he said alan why don't you take a piece of the chocolate bar and we're out in the boat in the middle of a lake in the middle of charlie lake in uh, near fort st john british columbia up in the rocky mountains fishing for pike and walleye and we're in this little boat and i remember he offered me half a chocolate bar and i looked and i examined and i saw which piece was bigger and being a young kid of course i took the larger piece and my dad without not in rebuke but in love said son i gave you the choice to see which which <laughs> which piece you would choose the bigger one or the smaller one and you chose the bigger one and he said, in life, son, always choose the smaller piece. And that, that little wisdom has stuck with me my whole life. And I found that if you choose a smaller piece, God will help you get the piece that, you, des that you, you, you deserve. He'll always make sure you get what you, what you deserve. He'll always make sure he gets what belongs to you. And when you can lose that ambition, that fight of fear to hold on to things, to fight for things, uh, to, to compete for things, then um, you become at peace with trusting God with your future. Because that ambition has to leave, that fire uh, and desire to be looked up to. In our social media world, it's, it's a competition all the time. Who has more likes? Who has more followers? How do I get more followers? Some of the old evangelists did this stuff. <clears throat> One man had a tent can't remember which one it was, uh, that held healing crusades. And his tent was the biggest in the world. And so he advertised it, the biggest, the biggest tent in the world for healing evangelism. Come and hear me preach. And another healing evangelist measured his tent and stretched it out just a few 
inches further out and then he would he could advertise i have the biggest tent <laughs> you know so at all ages at all callings at all types of people we're always fighting the same the same path can you come to a place of humility where where you seek you seek a life of humility so that god will exalt you if you humble yourself then you might as well tr trust and wait that God will exalt you. But let's be clear, if you exalt yourself, you make a way for yourself, you push uh, for yourself, you'll find that you are in charge of your future. And I don't know about you, but I'd much rather have God in charge of my future than me in charge of my future. Uh, let's go over to Philippians chapter 2. Uh, Paul, Paul is—he's a pastor now. He traveled to Africa. He was a missionary-hearted guy. I, I love him so much, and he's still strong in ministry. Many, many, many lives have been touched around the world, and and I'll never forget that day. Today, the dishes; tomorrow, the world. And what I've learned is that you never stop doing dishes. That same place of being humbled in essence the same heart to to do something to help people without pay they didn't pay us to do the dishes it was a volunteer uh, i think it's silly sometimes how much people want to get paid to do the kingdom of god i remember brother norval would norval hayes he, he he had many people who would want to preach for him and and he would ask different ones to come to his conferences and every once in a while we get a letter with requirements and I get it I mean I get it to a certain extent but the, you know some of the requirements were pretty pretty crazy you know you have so many rooms uh, so you know one wanted a white car a preacher I need a white certain white Cadillac to pick me up at the airport uh, I need this much money to to guaranteed before I'll come preach and brother Norville was old school and called them up and said since when do we charge to preach for Jesus, <laughs> you know, and cancel them? And he did that many times. And there's there's a walk with God that starts at the beginning, before anyone may know you, before you may be a preacher, or in your calling successful in the world's eyes. That that early time when no one notices you, or you, you're doing your best to just make it, that's the time to really cement in your heart that god i'm always going to be a servant that even if i'm doing what i'm called it's no dish different than doing the dishes today that that's what we do we are servants and and i believe in my heart that every believer no matter where you are if you're in a church or not in a church but if you're part of a group you're part of the body you need to have you need to be involved and not just receiving if you're just receiving, I'm receiving teaching, I'm receiving anointing, I'm receiving blessings, I'm receiving prayer, I'm receiving opportunity, then you are a lazy Christian. There's a walk with God that says, I want to participate. I want to be involved. I want to have some skin in the game, as they say. I want to be included. Can I help? What can I do? Let me do something. Well, no, we don't have anything here for you to do. We don't trust you yet then can I sweep the floor? And I would tell young preachers that all the time at our Bible college. They would come and, and they say, I'm called to preach, I'm called to prophesy, I'm called to be a prophet. Hallelujah. Uh, how can I be in, how can I help at the church? And we say, well, you know, we have a, a mop right here. We need the floor mopped and, uh, and swept and cleaned and uh, oh, no, no, you misunderstood. I'm called to be a prophet. And I'm called to teach the word. What in that category do you have for me? Well, unfortunately, we only have one microphone stand, one pulpit, because we already have a pastor. But where we do need help is we need someone to clean the floor. Yeah, but I'm not called to that. I'm called to these mightier things. Well, then you can, you're welcome to sit, but you can't participate. But I'm called. Okay, well, here's a mop. If you really want to help, I can tell you I need the floor mopped. 
and I don't want the pastor to have to mop the floor. Will you mop the floor? Well, but because, see, if God's not using you in your calling, don't just sit around and say, well, I'm just going to sit here until God calls me out of the blue in my calling. Praise God, I'm moving forward, <laughs> you know. No, participate where where you can be trusted. See, you can take a mop, and so I tell tell the students like, look, see that mop? It kind of looks like a mic stand, and so you can pretend you're preaching and prophesying, because you know you can hurt people in prophesying if you prophesy wrong. You can hurt people at teaching if you teach wrong, uh, but you can't hurt a mop, and and so just preach to the mop while you're mopping away, and and look, you even pray for it to fall down. In Jesus' name, <laughs> you know, you can't hurt the mop. And to me, if, 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 if it's not time yet for God to use me in what I'm called to do, I'm not going to wait to serve until then. I'll find areas where I can participate that don't take me out of prayer, that don't build my ministry, that no one pays me for or rewards me for. I call it serving without reward. I'll find something I can do that someone needs help in that no one will notice and no one will pay me because the idea is for the rest of my life, my time belongs to serving God. And so I might as well get used to it now. I might as well get used to serving without reward, meaning I'll mop the floor and no one has to pay me. No one has to thank me from the pulpit. I'll do it because it needs to be done. God sees it. He'll see that I'm I'm okay with doing that kind of work that no one knows. And when the day comes that he places me in my calling, whether it be to preach to 10,000 people, if I preach to 10,000 people and see miracles and signs and wonders, it won't reward me like I'm special. It will be as if I'm serving them washing the floor. Because uh, I've learned that serving, when you become a servant at heart, it's the work that we do because we don't look for a reward for the serving. And you can understand you're not going to get a lot of reward for mopping the floor. But when you have that same attitude when you're in front of 10,000 people preaching, that you're also not looking for a reward from them, an approval, uh, an excitement, knowing your name, uh, any of that stuff. Or if you're called to be a, a businessman and you come in with a, a million dollar check to the church, You'll, you will have the heart that, hey, I'm just mopping the floor today. You're not trying to get recognized or order the church around because you just gave a uh, million dollars to the church. You're being a servant at heart. So being a servant at heart should begin today, should begin the moment you're saved, that you, you should be involved somehow and, and participating somehow. And, and let the Lord lead you. If he says don't, then don't. But if he says uh, go in this area, go in that area. Always follow the Lord. But you should in your life be practicing being a servant in some way or another, helping, being involved without any recognition, without any pay, uh, without any pat on the back that you're willing to participate. Over in Philippians chapter 2, He's talking about some of this heart to the church. Uh, verse 1. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing... Now here's the heart, that how we should live as believers. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, verse 5, which was also in Jesus. So this mind that was in Jesus was to be a humble servant of God that what God had for him was what he did that day. Now listen, I've met many young, ambitious people who, who will tell me, I'm called to this, I'm called to that, 
and they and 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 you know, one young man, we we said we're going to uh, clean up the church parking lot and get the church ready for conference, and Saturday morning we're going to do it, and and he said, uh, yeah, okay, uh, I, that's my prayer time, I can't come, that's my 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 specific prayer time Saturday morning, which I understand we we were very careful about that, especially people who have lives of kids and families and jobs where you know they have to be very they have to fight for the time to pray we want you praying not busy just doing church stuff but this is a single young guy living on someone's couch he didn't even have a job i don't think at the time and and the question was from one of the other young men well what are you doing saturday night oh well, i've got plans to go out with my friends saturday night well see that was him choosing to 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 go out with the friends rather than help out because why don't you just cancel your friend stuff, pray then, and then come help out when we need you. In other words, I'm saying there's a lot of fishiness when it comes to making excuses from people who want to be used of God. And I can tell you, it's never going to happen. If you're not faithful in the little, when I say never, unless you really change, it's never going to happen. Because if you're not faithful in the little, so many people I know who want to be anointed of God, I just want God to pour His anointing on me and I'll walk in the crowd and blind eyes will see people will be healed and, and God will move. That's their heart to be used of God. They won't pick up the trash. They won't, they won't help their neighbor. They won't feed the poor. They won't do these little things, but they're waiting for the big thing. It's in the little things where you develop the heart for God to trust you with the big things. So there's many times in my life where God has steered me into this place of, of, of serving, which was the opposite way of my calling, my ministry. And it was because He was asking me to grow up, to mature, and to trust Him. Trust in Him means, God, if you're not asking me to preach right now, and I'm called to preach, if you're not asking me to be in business right now, and I'm called to make billions, you're not asking me to prophesy, and I'm called to prophesy. If you're not asking me to sing, and I'm called to lead worship. I'll be faithful with what's in front of me for the rest of my life, and I'll do it with all my heart as if I was preaching to 100,000 people, as, as if I was making a billion dollars. I'll be faithful to this little thing with all of my heart because you see it, and you are the only one I want promotion from. I don't want man's promotion. Listen, if man promotes you, man can take it away. But if God promotes you, then no man can take it away. And here he's telling us about this heart. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition. That means that you've taken the agenda of the flesh, the agenda of serving self, rewarding self, uh, and you have uh, killed it. You don't live by that. You live by... God is all that I need. Now, what I'm talking about may seem extreme, but really it should be the basics of, of Christianity. God, you're all that I need. You're all that I want. I don't need man's approval. I need your approval. I don't need man's promotion. I need your promotion. I need you, Father. That should be the heart of everything we do. And Father, if you have me doing this one little thing for the rest of my life, and no one knows my name, no one sees me, that I'm okay with that because my life doesn't belong to me. My life belongs to you. This is the heart of a servant. This is the heart that will get promotion from God in your future. My life is in your hands. I'm going to go over to Luke chapter 17 now. Through my years of ministry, I've learned many people who seem to have it together, have the ability to make things happen. They have a natural charisma and natural skills. Uh, find promotion from the world or from, uh, from people, from men. And, and they seem to skip some of this heart of serving, this heart of letting go of their future. And God will always use anyone who, who allows him to. But they're missing out on the true promotion that comes from God. That's a big difference, boy. Wow. Letting God promote you. It's different than man promoting you. So different. 
in our society today, I don't know how this this new generation is going to to make it. You know, because there's so much from their youth being fed into their life on getting quick approval, fast approval uh, through social media. Uh, it, they're going to have to overcome a lot of that ingrained self self serving. Uh, that that's in our culture today more so than some of us older folk who didn't have as much access to likes and followers Luke chapter 17 we'll start in verse 5 after the Lord told them to forgive uh, 70 times 7 the Apostle said Lord Increase our faith. <laughs> and the Lord said, If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can say to the mulberry bush, Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Now, we're going to stop there. We're going to go through this part slow. If you have faith of a mustard seed, you can say to the mulberry tree. So the mulberry tree is kind of a big bushy tree. And what he's saying is the way to have more faith is you is put the mustard seed with the mulberry tree and the faith of the mustard seed will grow and overtake the mulberry tree. Be pulled up by the roots and planted in the sea and it would obey you. So it's a process here of growing up in faith of maturing to overcome uh, brokenness and, and that kind of thing. And which of you, here, here's, here's the principle. Which of you, having a servant, plowing or, or tending sheep, will say to him, When he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat? But will he not rather say to him, Prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me, till I have eaten and drunk, and afterwards you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded of him? I think not. So here, Jesus is demolishing the the avenue of uh, building up your future, of uh, of, of earning earning uh, your way into the kingdom of God, your way into faith, of earning your way into your future. And he's saying, which of you have a servant that that? And he's talking about himself. It says, but which of you has a servant? And and after uh, plowing and tending the sheep, we'll say to him, when he comes in from the field, come out, come at once and sit down and eat. He said, no, you don't do that. But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I've eaten and drunk? And afterward, you'll eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded of him? I think not. See, this is so many. This is so so deep here. The levels of payment that people pursue, that many people will do good work just to feel good about themselves. Many people will go find the the broken and help them more because they want to feel worthy. Many churches do lots of programs and and uh, outreaches and and things. Uh, mainly to help the people find a sense of purpose. We're going to put a program, a play on, and it's more. It's it does it is an outreach, but sometimes the hidden agenda is we need to give the people something they could do so they could feel good about themselves. So the payment is that you feel good about yourself because you did something. And the point of being a servant at heart is that you serve just because that's what we do. If you feel called to God, if you feel led that God has something for you, which you should because He does for everyone, then you are called to be a servant every day for the rest of your life. And you'll never stop being that servant. One day you may be mopping the floor faithfully. The day that I I figured out, and I, it wasn't because I was smart, it was the help of the Holy Spirit that it meant no difference if I was mopping the floor or preaching behind the podium, my calling. 
both of them should be, to me, should feel the same. I'm serving you. And people can feel it. You know that when you're preaching the word and you don't, you're not trying to get something out of them. You're not trying to get money out of them. You're not trying to get applause out of them. You're not trying to build your ego up. You're not trying to get celebrity uh, worship from them. You're just serving them. I'm here to wash your feet. I'm here to serve you. It's, it's like I'm mopping the floor for you. Um, they can feel that, that you don't want anything from them, that you're there to serve them so that then they can look at Jesus and not at you. Well, whatever you're called to do, it should never be different than what you can do today in serving God. Verse 8. But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk, and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, talking to the disciples, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. What have We have done what was our duty to do. We are unprofitable servants, meaning we're not paid. We don't do this because we're paid. See, your payment starting off, <laughs> your payment starting off was that you were born again. You get to go to heaven for eternity. <laughs> There's no greater payment than being birthed into the family of God. That's really your payment that you didn't earn, you didn't, you didn't uh, pay for it, you didn't earn it. It was given to you free. And that's why our life on this end belongs to Him, and it should be for free. I'll do whatever you ask God and be faithful to it for as long as you ask me to do it, because my life belongs to you. There's so many cultural things in the church, worldly ideas and worldly principles and some to the extreme and some to just, it's hidden in the culture. Ideas of how to get promoted, how to get move up in the kingdom of God, how to get people to recognize you, how to, how to get into your calling. And you know, I'm just so thankful for the Holy Spirit, the time praying in tongues saved me from so much garbage, saved me from so many bad decisions. You need to pray in tongues a lot because it will rescue you from being stupid and making dumb decisions trust me so many times i wondered i look back and wonder why didn't i take that opportunity why didn't i do that why did i stay in there and i look back and say wow the holy spirit has helped me to pray out the will of god in my life so i wouldn't abandon the part where he had me grow up because when things it's easy it's easy to it's easy to serve when it's easy but when it's hard that's when it's hard it's easy to serve when, when everyone's doing stuff and, and everyone's there, but when you're the only one there, when you're all there is, and all your friends are out having fun or going to the restaurants, and you're stuck there doing something, serving, uh, then it's a little easier to try to make an excuse to get out of it. But when you trust God, Father, my future's in your hands. I am a servant from this day for the rest of my life. And God will say, You've been faithful in serving with the mop. And I'm just using the mop as a, as a, a metaphor. So I'm not telling you to just go mop places. I'm just, but when you've been faithful to the mop when no one's seen you and you still showed up, when you've been faithful to the dishes and no one recognizes you, no one said thank you, then one day God will say, you know what? You've been faithful in this. I'm going to have you serve in a different way. I'm going to have you preach the word. I'm going to have you go build a business to bring in a billion dollars because then you're still serving. You're always a servant. We have some good examples in our Christianity. We have some really bad examples of men and women of God who, who are called to maybe an apostle or a prophet. And, and, and they're like peacocks. They walk around like peacocks. And I'm, I don't want to belittle anyone, but to me it's amusing to watch how they hold power over other men and use their their calling. I don't want I don't want to be them when they meet God. Uh, use their calling and what God does through them to try to get recognition, money, prestige out of people. Um, honor honor your 
honor your spiritual father. Send them, send them gifts and money and and all that all that garbage. And and I had one one guy. He said, "Well, what do I do? My my apostle keeps telling me that I'm his spiritual son. He's my spiritual father, and I'm supposed to send him money every month to to support the father." And I'm, I get, I understand, like, yeah, it's not, it's not a bad thing to support the church and the ministry. That's a good thing. That's important, yes. But this was like extra. Like, you are my spiritual son. I'm your spiritual father. You're supposed to give me extra money. And and I said, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a natural father, and I have a natural son, and you know, he's 17 right now, but he, you know, he's been with me for 17 years. And I don't think he's ever offered to, to support me. He's never offered to pay the mortgage or, or even to buy groceries. Uh, I think it's the place of the father to support the son. So why don't you send your spiritual father a, a, a request that he supports you financially? You know, I think we have it so backwards in the church. And, and really, it's silliness. Some of it's just silliness. And it's dangerous as well. Anyways, we are to be unprofitable servants. That word unprofitable means uh, not paid. We're not paid for what we do. Anything we do for God, every, every person we feed in the, the feed the poor, every time we witness, every time we pray for someone, every time we share the word, every time we sweep and mop and, and, and help, help and give money, even the given money should not be I'm going to give so God will bless me back. <laughs> I know I know I should uh, I can be careful how I say this, but that's been that's been used and abused. Wouldn't you like to be blessed of God? Give money. Where he doesn't tell us that in scripture. He does tell us to be a faithful steward. That if you're a faithful steward with what God's given to you, in other words, it's not your money to give, it's his money, and he said give it, and you were faithful to do what he said to do. Uh, then you can expect that he can trust you with more because you've been a faithful steward. That's completely different than you have money, wouldn't you like to plant a seed so you have more money and more money and more money? That's okay, but it's not complete. The better way is to say, God, you you are my source, not because of what I did, but because of what Jesus did. And I'll be a faithful steward with what you have given to me. And in that faithfulness, you will trust me with more. Over here in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 1. Paul talking about himself and the apostles. says, let a man, verse 1, chapter 4, 1 Corinthians. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So he uses this word, servants of Christ. And that word servant is a, uh, from the root word, the Greek word for that is, uh, means under rower. And that's a picture of the, the Roman ships, warships that, the soldiers would go to war on and underneath the ship in the bottom of the ship were slaves chained to the oars and when they wanted the warship to ram another ship or go faster they would uh, uh, make the slaves row faster row row and and uh, there's small movies that show that picture you see these slaves at the bottom of the ship and the guy with the hit the drum boom 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 and they had to keep cadence with uh, how fast they rowed, uh, chained to the oars. They were slaves. Well, that's the picture when he says, uh, let a man consider us, and he's talking about the apostles, as servants, as under rowers, as slaves. They're the lowest of the low. They're the slaves that do the work and don't get paid. And it's so important, I think, moving forward. And I know I'm not preaching to the entire church, but I'm preaching to you because God play, put you here. Um, that we grow up and we learn to trust God with everything. This isn't so much a choice, like I'm going to choose to do this. 
But if you keep praying in the Holy Ghost, this is the some of the fruit that will come out of you. Some of the uh, the fruit that will come out of your heart, the understanding. And I want you to know that it's not wrong, it's right to trust God with everything. And that no matter what you're called to, we're all called to be servants and to always be a servant for the rest of our life, forever. And it doesn't mean that we want our apostles and our pastors and our teachers or our businessmen mopping floors. We want them in their calling, doing what God's told them to do and changing the world. But they should never lose the heart and never never, uh, never lose the, the attitude of, I'm here to serve the body of Christ. I'm here to serve Christ. I am a servant. I am not being paid today. My payment will come when I stand before Jesus at the, at the end of times. That's when we will receive our reward. Today, how do I believe God for my finances? Father, thank you for being my provider. You're all that I have. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for the abundance of heaven in my life. I'll be faithful to do exactly what you want me to do. In Jesus' name. See, you trust God with your finances. And yes, in this picture, God will use people. He'll use people in giving finances. He'll use people in, in recognizing the call of God on your life. I'm so thankful for men and women in my past who, who recognized God's call in my life and, and, and participated in helping me go further in God. Uh, but it didn't come from them. It came as they recognized what God was doing. So in all this, God will be using people, and it's very tempting on one, one end or the other to offer promotion. Uh, many preachers along the way of my youth offered me pathways of promotion, and they were saying, I'll be, I'll be the guy that, that makes the door open for you. I'll be the guy that makes a way for you to go forward. And, and really... They should say, God told me, I see the call of God in your life. God is moving you forward. I'm just opening the door that he told me to open. I wouldn't open it otherwise. And so, yes, man will be included, but Jesus is all you need. God is all you need. You have everything you need in him. Your role for people, your role in ministry, your role in every part of your calling for the rest of your life, the rest of my life will be that I'll never, on this earth, I'll never ever be looked at as higher. I'll never allow myself to look at myself as higher than being the servant that washes dishes or mops the floor. That's all that I do. That all, that's all that it feeds me. It shouldn't feed my ego when I preach. It shouldn't feed my self-value when I preach. It shouldn't feed my self-purpose, my Self-purpose when I do things for God? No. Nope. It's what I do. It's my job. It's my duty. It's what I do. What I do does not reward me. I tell people all the time, God will ask you to take your dreams and stop chasing them. Because He doesn't want your dreams to fulfill you. He wants to fulfill you. So many believers are chasing their dreams, thinking that when I get there, then I'll be satisfied. Well, God doesn't want you satisfied by what you do or where you go or how people look at you. He wants you satisfied with Him. He's a jealous God. He wants to be the only thing that satisfies you, that completes you, is Him. Not someone or something you do. Let's keep praying. Let's keep seeking God. Uh, we're always servants. And I, I hope you understand that. I, don't, I hope I'm not too hard on you today. But I, I want you to know that I'm here to serve you. That we are servants only in the rest of our life. I know that God has a call in your life. And I know that one of the most important ingredients is to get the heart of a servant in you, an unpaid servant. That I do this because it's my duty. God, God will always promote me because He chooses to. Not because I've earned it, but because it's His choice. We're always a servant. Great things are ahead for you. 
Don't be discouraged. It can be very hard when you let go of all your power to make things happen. And you trust Him with your future, with your life, and you're faithful with what's in front of you. Sometimes it can be very hard to, to trust that, that anything's coming. But if you let go of it, God will make sure that He'll give it to you in the future. And it'll be beautiful. It'll be incredible. Keep being faithful. Keep being a servant. Wonderful things are ahead. Thank you again for taking time with me. I love you, and I'll see you soon.